Good afternoon to my family at St. Mark's. I want to welcome you back to another uh, presentation today. This is going to be sort of a special one. Today is Maundy Thursday, and the uh, St. Mark's would like to send out a special tribute to uh, uh, to commemorate Maundy Thursday, and that's what we want to do today. So thank you for being with me. Uh, before I continue, I really need to thank uh, Curry McClurkin, uh, our church administrator, for her tremendous help and patience in helping uh, these uh, broadcasts be put out. Also, the uh, Alex and Sarah Morris Brown for their work in this. And I appreciate your uh, all that you've done because I certainly don't know how to do this. And if I don't do a good job, I, again, I am sorry. But we'll do the best we can today, and and hopefully it does this. Uh, today is Monday Thursday. I'm again sort of out in my backyard. You can kind of see sort of things going around here this is um i just like to to do this and get a chance to um uh to be with you with the, this situation i am see i'm still from saint mark's and uh, i'm still the sunday school teacher but today again it's a special maundy thursday uh maundy thursday the word maundy actually means washing feet uh, because this is the one of the most holy days in the church year in which Jesus, besides, uh, he's been all week preaching in the temple, and uh, uh, on this day, which is the Passover, he celebrates the Passover with his uh, the twelve. They go to an upper room, when when he says many things, he he introduces the uh, the Eucharist, the Holy Eucharist, into uh, our uh, what we use today. Uh, many call it the Last Supper, but uh, more to think about this is the uh, day that the first Eucharist was created, or the first. Uh, which is Latin and Greek for the Great Thanksgiving. So today is the day that the first Great Thanksgiving was produced. Also, in the uh, that's in the Synoptic Gospels. In the Gospel of John, Jesus washes the disciples' feet after a long dialogue explaining to them what is to expect and what will be coming and what's to expect for them. So, um, as always, we will start our, our, our segment off here with the uh, a prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. This is from... Uh, page, I believe, 169 uh, about the Maundy Thursday, and we'll go in with some uh, selected verses from the uh, chapter 14 and 15 of the Gospel of John. So, uh, the Lord be with you. Almighty God, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it, thankfully in the remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now some readings from the um, uh, Gospel of John, chapters 14 and 15. Uh, the Holy, this is Jesus speaking to his disciples and says, the Holy Spirit uh, whom the Father uh, will send in my name. He will teach you in all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said. Jesus continues, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And finally in chapter 15, he continues, this will be my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. So uh, the word of the Lord. All right, so this is the day which, again, many, many things have happened. We had the, uh, the Passover dinner with the uh, beginning of the Lord, uh, the Eucharist. Uh, we had the washing of the feet, and then Jesus goes into the Garden of Gethsemane and says very much, even though the disciples do not have the, uh, cannot stay with them, he, he prays to God, being fully human, saying, God, if there's any way this cup passed me by, I pray that it, this happened. But then he concludes three times, no, not my will, but thy will be son. It's interesting with the way he started out teaching us to pray in, uh, the, um, in Matthew and Luke. And the, when he first starts his ministry, he says, thy will be done. And he concludes it with his last prayer that we have record of the same way, thy will be done. Uh, it's interesting to come here today because today we're in a period of isolation. We're in a period of, um, of disconnection. We're in a period of fear for many of us with all that's going on. Uh, this is the Holy Week. This is a time when all of us will be coming to church several times. We'll be getting together. We'll be looking forward to a, a wonderful and glorious Easter morning. And this is the time we'll be coming to church to, to hear a, a message, to uh, be with one another. I'm sorry, to celebrate all that's going on. But now we are not able to do that. First time in centuries, Christians will not be gathering in churches 
to do this. Um, we have not been uh, follow, uh, commemorating the Eucharist in our diocese since March the 10th. So it's almost like our 40 days, and we'll talk about that another time. This is it. But uh, Jesus says in these things, says, let not your heart be troubled, uh, nor let it be fearful. It's funny, fear not occurs in the Bible 365 times. Sometimes that's said by Jesus, sometimes it's said by God, sometimes by various angels. No, but 365 times, we're instructed to fear not. And of all the instructions, that is the one that's hardly hardest for us to do. And this, so we, you know, it's, it's very difficult, and, and this is the time that we're going through. It's very meant for us to fear and feel what it is. But I'm reminded of a story, and this was told at St. Mark's by one of the uh, canons from the diocese a few years ago, told us about our bishop, Rob Wright. Rob Wright, long before he became bishop, uh, had various jobs. He was uh, uh, in the uh, uh, Episcopal Church. On September 11th of 2001, part of his, one of his assignments with the Episcopal Church took him to Manhattan. He was working in lower Manhattan that morning when the planes hit the Twin Towers, and he was there. Because of his position in the church and who he was, he was one of the few uh, early volunteers who were allowed to go in there starting like two, uh, the day after and the few days after 9-11. Uh, so this was most when people were still trying to rescue, they were looking for bodies. He among, and some others were allowed to go in and they spent their time ironically distributing a respiratory mask to the first responders, but also clean socks and bottles of water. And this was, it was going around there. And he describes this time of walking around lower Manhattan right after this happened as almost like being on the moon because everything was covered with gray dust. And except for the occasional sirens and equipment, uh, there were long periods of silence when they're trying to l listen to see if there were, um, you know, people in the, in the wreckage that they could, uh, you know, to try to rescue. So with all this eerie, probably the most solemn occasion uh, that you can imagine, with all the sadness going on, it was, it was monumental, it was almost uh, unbearable, all the solemnity. As he says, as he was doing his duties and going around, he walked around a corner and in the dust, somebody had written in big letters on a, on a wall that was, remained standing, and it said, we still believe. We still believe. So today, as we face this time of not being able to be together at church, as we face the first Holy Week in, in centuries, we've been not been able to gather together and to celebrate Easter, I pray that we remember what Jesus said, fear not, and that using the, the faith that Jesus passes on to us and the gift of the Holy Spirit that he promised to send and did send to us to uh, sustain us, that on Easter morning, we, the family of St. Mark's and all, all people of the world can get on our knees and look up to God and say, we still believe. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord during this time give you, uh, may you feel God's love, God's presence, and feel God's peace. I pray that you are safe and healthy and on, on Easter morning, you will be able to say, we still believe. Thank you.